Prophet Tom James. God has put a mandate on my heart, and that mandate is to preach the prophetic word. Again, it's Prophet Tom, and we're here to open the Word of God. We've been looking at the Book of Acts, the day of Pentecost. We have covered how that in the last days of Christ, he began to reveal to them a powerful mystery. That mystery was the coming of the Holy Ghost. Then we began, and then we moved to the upper room. And the events that unfolded in those 10 days. And then lastly, we saw the explosion of the Holy Ghost. The coming, the rushing mighty wind, such an effect uh, that it roused up uh, the whole city of Jerusalem. And tens of thousands of people began to gather around this upper room. And from that outpouring, one of the initial signs of the coming of the Holy Ghost upon the 120 was fire as of tongues resting on each one of the 120. We're going to begin to continue opening this passage up. We see from the preaching of Peter the effects that the coming of the Holy Ghost had when 3,000 souls gave their heart to Jesus. But by way of explaining, I want us to go back and see the great mystery of the fires of God throughout the Bible. And I want to sew that up together by entitling this little series, The Fire of God and You. How do you relate to the fire of God? We see from right back uh, uh, in, uh, in Exodus chapter 3, and we know the story so well, the burning bush of Mo of, uh, that Moses encountered. Uh, but from that burning bush, just let me read uh, a few of the verses. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian. Now let me stop there. You see, we are going to marry the burning bush of Exodus 3 with the day of Pentecost. And then we're going to climax that as in the days of Pentecost. We're going to climax that by having the burning bush of Moses, the day of Pentecost, and you today. How the three intertwine and come together. And what is the thing or the purpose or who is it that combines and unites the three together? We're going to see from the life of Moses how that he was weak just as you and I are weak. We're going to see from the life of Moses that he had hurts and rejections, just like you and I have hurts and rejections. We're going to see from the life of Moses that he had fears and, and, and shortcomings, just like you and I have fears and shortcomings. But you know, from the story of Exodus, of the burning bush, 
one of the realities that we see before we actually come to read about it is that Moses, with all of his failures, was a man who was hungry for more of God. And I know today that you, a woman of God, that you, a man of God, that you, a child of God, with all of your failures, with all of your hurts and your rejections, have a hunger for God, or you would not be listening to this message today. So Moses had fled Egypt. He didn't flee Egypt because he feared uh, uh, Pharaoh. It says in Hebrews that he fled Egypt to find this lost God. And you and I, even though we're born again, have been on a search knowing that there is more. Moses knew that there was more. And you and I are on that journey today knowing, knowing in our heart that there is more. So when we come to this burning bush, let me read a bit more. When we come to this burning bush, one of the significance, one of the things that we see is that there are five powerful keys that God reveals in this conversation with Moses. Let us read just a few verses. Now Moses was tending the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest uh, of Midian, and he led the flock uh, to the back of the desert and came to Horeb, the mountain of God. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire from the midst of the bush. So he looked and behold, the bush was burning with fire, but the fire was not consumed. Then Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush does not burn. And so the Lord saw that Moses had turned aside to look, and God called to him from the midst of the bush and, and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And then he said, Do not draw near this place. Take your sandals off your feet, for the place where you stand is holy ground. Let us jump down a few verses and let's go down to verse 11. And Moses said to God, who am I? In fact, let's go back to verse 10. Come now, therefore, and I, this is God speaking, I will send you to Pharaoh that you may bring my people, the children of Israel, out of Egypt. Now, from these verses and the verses that uh, for time, not time, time sake, uh, I did not read. Uh, we see five powerful statements, five powerful realities that God brings out if we're going to be used by him. The first, of course, is that Moses saw, and we read it, that when Moses looked uh, and saw the wonder of this bush burning, that he looked aside and said, I will see this wonder. But before we even answer this first one, let me backtrack a little again. What was Moses doing on the side of the desert? You do not bring sheep to the desert. You see, the first real key, the foundational key, is knowing where to find God. You will not find God on social media. You will not find God in nightclubs. You will not find God in your workplace or even with your family. You find God in your closet. 
You find God by going to the very presence where you know God will be. In Moses' case, that was the mountain of God. For 40 years, uh, Moses had sat under the teaching of uh, his pastor, his father-in-law. He had began to learn from his father-in-law about God, about Abraham, about Isaac, about Jacob. He began to learn some of the, the history of the Jewish people. And from that, and because of his personal hunger, he takes the sheep to a place you do not take sheep to the desert, to a hot and dry and parched area. And you may be dry, hot, and parched. You may be worn out. But let me tell you, if you are that way, you are at the foot of the mountain of Almighty God. And so Moses comes. And he looks and he sees this bush burning, but the bush is not consumed. And so he turns to look and turns to approach this book, uh, uh, this, this tree, uh, and God speaks. And God says, Moses, Moses, you are standing on holy ground. So once we see the burning bush, once we're near and in the mountain of God, the presence of God Almighty, and we see the fire of God, the first key that we will learn is that where God is, there is holiness. God is a holy God. And we're going to enlarge this when I marry uh, the, 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 uh, the burning bush, Hedekost, and us. When I marry them together, we're going to enlarge upon the holiness of God because the holiness of God is missing from the church today to a large extent. Uh, we have believers or so-called believers uh, sitting in pews every Sunday uh, that are consumed more in the world than they are in the things of God. We have people that are compromised. Uh, they're living in relationships that are not right. That's the, 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 the convicting power of the Holy Ghost has been, in, in, in some ways, pushed out of the church. And that's because we haven't taken off our shoes. And so the first principle, the first key that we learn regarding the burning bush is the holiness and purity of God. And remember, I taught you from the upper room uh, that uh, in those 10 days, the 120 were being purified. They were being washed from the rags, the filth. Uh, they had been washed from the things that uh, had bound their lives, anxiety, the hurts, the rejections, the hatreds, their failures. They were being washed from all of that. So that on the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost fell, they were pure. This is the first key that Moses needed to learn. The second thing that God reveals, and I read that uh, in verse 10, uh, and that is the burning bush uh, was the commissioning fire of the ministry of Moses. Uh, you see, it's only in the presence of God. It's only when we come into that inner chamber with God uh, that we learn uh, and God reveals to us. I've had some numbers of Christians uh, say to me, how do I know the will of God for my life? Go to your burning bush. Go through these keys. Thirdly, we observe that the fire rebirths the unbreakable covenants of God. You see, God made a covenant with Abraham. And although Israel were now in bondage, were now slaves in Egypt, that covenant still stood. A covenant that God would take them to the promised land. And that covenant still stands today. God has the promised land 
for you today. The fourth thing that we observe from the fire is that out of the fire came the power of God. God said to Moses, out of the fire, God says to Moses, what is in your hand? Moses said, a rod. God said, throw it on the ground. And he threw it and it became a serpent. God said, grab it by the tail. And as he grabbed it by the tail, uh, it became a rod again. God said, uh, put your hand in your bosom. And when he pulled the hand out, it was leprosy. He says, put it in again. And when he pulled it out, it was gone. The power of Almighty God. We will look at, at uh, chapter 5 on, uh, especially chapter 7, the authority that was given to Moses. How that he goes before Pharaoh and he says, thus saith the Lord. And then we had 10 plagues, the 10 curses that Moses spoke over the nation of Egypt and over Pharaoh's life. And then lastly, as we come to a close today, we have God's compassionate heart being revealed through the fire. He says to Moses, he said, I have heard cry of my children. And God is looking for a Moses today. As he looked up and he saw Moses, as he saw Isaiah, and he cried out, Who can I send? And Isaiah said, Here am I, send me. With Ezekiel, and he says there that God says, I go to and fro throughout the land looking for a man, but I found none. God is looking today, going to and fro throughout the earth. He's looking for another Moses. Uh, he's looking for a man uh, that will deliver the nations out of the woke and out of their bondage. Will that be you? Will that be me? For that to happen, we must experience the fire. And through the fire, we must experience the holiness of God. We must understand and hear our commissioning uh, through the fire of God. Uh, we must understand that God's covenant uh, will last and does last forever and will always exist. We must know, even as God said to the, uh, hundred, the, the 500, uh, you know, that in Acts chapter 1 and verse 8, that you shall receive power when the Holy Ghost comes upon you. You must come into the revelation and God's heart weeps for his lost children. And God is wanting you. He's wanting to anoint you. He's wanting to commission you. He's wanting to assign you. And for that to happen, you and me, we need to burn. We need to have a burning bush experience. We need to have an upper room experience. We need to have a Holy Ghost. Acts chapter 2, not pouring. We need to have that today. Well, our time's gone again. This is Prophet Tom. Oh, it's such a joy. I'm a Holy Ghost man. It's such a joy to speak to you about the Holy Ghost. And I'm looking forward to Thursday when we come again to share the word of God with you. Go seeking for your fire today.